Hi guys, my GCSE Revision here. Today we're going to be talking about the creation of credit in the macro economy and we're going to be using the balance sheet to explain how the creation of credit is inputted into the bank's balance sheet. So first of all, let's say the bank, let's call this bank A. Bank A is deposited <clears throat> 100 million by consumers. So obviously that is a liability because they owe that money to the consumers. So let's put it in here. Let me change the color. We'll put red for what the bank owes, liabilities. So we'll put that as deposits being 100 million. I'll put a million here and million here. So deposits are 100 million. And banks always have a liquidity ratio, also known as a reserve ratio. Essentially what that means is they have to put a certain percentage of their money into the Bank of England or say that they're not going to spend this money just in case something bad happens. Just like um, in 2008, it was known as the run of the bank where everyone went to the bank and tried to withdraw all their money. This was quite prominent in Northern Rock. So to prevent this from happening, there should always be a reserve in the bank so let's call that let's say um, the reserve is 10 percent of the deposit 10 percent of 100 million is 10 million so let's let's call this the reserve and this goes into the bank of england and as i said this would be 10 million and you're probably wondering right now what does the remaining 90 million do and where does it go so this remaining 90 million goes to consumers in the form of loans. So people will borrow from the bank and the bank will loan to them. And let's just call that loans. And that will be 90 million. As you can probably see and probably guess, the reserve ratio in this case is 10 million. This is this happens in the USA. There is a reserve ratio of 10 million of 10 but in the UK there currently isn't a uh, a reserve ratio but you're probably asking how do we calculate this reserve ratio so this reserve ratio can be called liquidity ratio or a quick ratio so let's just call it a quick ratio for this and essentially what this is is current assets over current liabilities So I'll just do a demonstration with what we have. So the quick ratio would be our current assets would be our reserve because we that is readily available to us. These loans will not be readily available to us. They could be non-current assets, meaning um, it's an economic benefit, 12, 12 months or more. So what would go on top here is our 10 million pound reserve. <clears throat> and our current liabilities, our deposits, what we owe people is 100 million. And from that calculation, we can cancel out the zeros. 1 over 10 is 0 0.1. We times this number by 100, which gives us 10%. So we've got 10% liquidity ratio. So now we have loaned out this 20 million. How is this going to create money for the bank? Because essentially what they're getting back is 9 million. Well, the banks charge an interest rate. But let's totally disregard the interest rate for now. This 9 million is going to be taken in by borrowers and these borrowers are going to use this money. So let me just draw a little diagram. Let's call this the borrowers. So the borrowers are borrowing money and obviously they're going to be spending this money in some form. They may be spending it, let's say they own a care home, they may be spending it on equipment they may be improving the bedrooms buying more beds and this money this money is going to the people who manufacture these beds excuse my bad drawing of a bed so they'll be giving this money to the people who make the beds and the people who make the beds where are they going to put the money they're going to put the money into another bank so this money that they have is going to go into bank let's call this bank b so it's going to go into bank b and let's just for the sake of ease let's say this bank b is bank a so let, let me get rid of this and let me call that bank a 
So they're putting it back into this bank. So now what's going to happen is this bank is going to see more deposits. They're going to see deposits thereabouts, considering none of it gets withdrawn, but that's a different concept. They're going to see 90 million coming into the bank. So now that they've seen this 90 million coming into the bank, they think, oh, we can lend more money out now. But remember, we still got to have that 10% reserve ratio. So let's just quickly do the maths. We have 90, 90 million and we need a 10% reserve ratio or a liquidity ratio. What's that going to be? That's going to be 9 million. So reserve, 9 million. So now they're going to give that 9 million to the Bank of England or they're just going to keep it in a reserve account in the bank. What they have now is they have more money they can loan out. So from their original 100 million, or what we can say from this 90 million, they are now can loan out a further 81 million. And as you can see from this original 100 million that we lent out, we are now loaning out this one and this one combined. And if my math is correct, that's 171 million currently in the economy, stimulating the economy and making it grow faster. And as we probably see with coronavirus, um, the interest rates are extremely low and the uh, Bank of England is pumping in money into the economy. This money into the economy is going to go to people, consumers, they're going to deposit the money. It's going to go into the bank. The bank are go then going to create more borrowings, more loans, and this is what's going to keep on going over in a continuous cycle and create more money in the economy. And after a while, this 81 million will come back as deposits. And you can guess what this is going to be. It's going to be 81 million. And now we can do restart the process. Reserve. Remember our 10% liquidity ratio, that's going to be 8.1 straight to the Bank of England and loans are going to be some number 70, 70 something million. So you're probably thinking now, when does this process stop and how much money does a, an injection of 100 million actually create in credit for the economy? And there's an equation for this. We call this the bank multiplier. The bank multiplier. And this is calculated as essentially the inverse liquidity ratio. So 1 over L. L obviously meaning the liquidity ratio or the quick ratio. And so um, an initial injection can do the maths 1 over 0 0.1 which is going to be an injection of if I can get my calculator out ten we're gonna have a ten times bank multiplier this ten times bank multiplier will mean our initial let me use a different color will mean our initial 100 billion injection times 10 is going to generate 1,000 million, which is equivalent to 1 billion. So it's going to generate us 1 billion, 1 billion in total. Obviously, we need to minus the 100 million because that, that's essentially including our initial 100 million injection which will leave us with 900 million. So this is how banks will, or the, the government through issuing, issuing government bonds and allowing people to deposit extra money in the economy, how 100 million deposits into the bank will end up with 900 million in total. Obviously this can happen with banks. So let's say um, the, the bed company didn't, they didn't put it into bank A, instead they put it into bank B. And if we just make a quick liabilities assets, there would be deposits in this bank of 90 million and 
reserve nine and loans 81. So it doesn't matter which bank it's put into, they're still creating credit. It does depend on the liquidity ratio. They could have li different levels of liquidity ratio depending on the size of the bank, the, um, the country it's in, if it's in the US or the UK or um, some Asian country. But that is essentially the creation of credit. Thank you for watching and goodbye.